from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Veeam on 2020. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of Veeam on 2020 online. Really happy to welcome to the program. We've done Veeam on for many years. First time doing it online, and we have two first-time guests in the center square. We have Daniel Freed. He is the GM and senior vice president of EMEA and the head of Worldwide Channels. And sitting on the other side of the screen is David Harvey. He's the vice president of Strategic Alliances. Both of them, of course, with Veeam. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Welcome. All right, Daniel, maybe start with you. Uh, you know, the online event obviously, uh, you know, gives us, you know, there's some challenges, but there's also some opportunities rather than, you know, thousands of us gathering in Las Vegas where it looks like there's a diversity of locations because if you look up and down the street, the, the strip, um, in, instead we really have a global event and an opportunity. Uh, I'm speaking to you where you are in Asia right now. What What is, you know, the online event mean and, you know, how you can relate to, you know, gosh, how many countries do you have uh, attending the event this year? Uh, so so, so the, good, the good thing about, about being online is, as you mentioned, as you said, is, is we can have all, all people from all countries all around the world being present, of course, virtually. Uh, now, with my responsibility, my worldwide responsibility for the channels, uh, all countries in the world, we, we have partners of all, in all countries in the world, which means that uh, all our teams, as well as all our partners, our virtual teams, are the key elements uh, of, of joining that, that event today. So that's, that's why I'm very, very happy to, this, to have this virtual event, which is much easier than having all people to try flying in from all the different parts of the world to Vegas. Right, and, and, and David, you know, also with Alliance's standpoint, I assume since, you know, they don't actually have to fly to Vegas, uh, we've got the special guest appearances by Satya Nadella, uh, you know, Arvind Krishna, you know, all of the, you know, Andy Jassy, you know, everyone's coming in, but no, in all seriousness, um, from an Alliance standpoint, uh, you know, would love to hear how you're, you're working with the partner uh, for, for the global event. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, security is having a tough time keeping them at bay right now. I mean, the online thing is handy because we can just cut them off. But, uh, uh, but you're exactly right. The support of the alliances has been fantastic. Uh, everyone's trying to adjust to this new uh, world we're in. But what you're seeing this week um, is a fantastic response by the alliances to want to make the partnership really work and, and we're doing the same for their events and, and it's just a really nice sort of camaraderie that's coming together and so um they've been great in supporting us as you've as you're seeing through the week um and we're excited about the overall vibe that we're getting and the commitment that uh, we're getting from the customers and from the alliances which is really really good excellent well we know that you know veeam is 100 percent partner focused daniel maybe let's start with you uh you know what what's new kind of in the last year since, since we were together uh, at Veeam on last year. So, so on, on the new on the new things that we have been uh, doing for the last year is actually continuing first to, to move with our 100% partner move uh, since the beginning of, of, of Veeam and all the way to, you know, to the following years, to the next quarters. But uh, more importantly than that is definitely the move that we see uh, with working with the alliances uh, and their partners as well as working much more with the service providers, meaning the cloud service providers, where there is a big, big, big trend uh, now in the market with customers requesting more and more services rather than, than I would say, technologies and products on premise. Uh, so we see that happening everywhere around the world. It is accelerating now, again, with the situation that we see worldwide because of this, uh, no, this bad situation. Uh, where virtual is a, a big move that we, uh, we, we can see from customers and, and the partners that we have, the ecosystem that we've built um, all around the world is helping very much in this move. Excellent, and, and David, would love to hear the, the, the progress that uh, your group's been making with, with some of the partners. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been a really exciting ride. Uh, our year-over-year -year growth rates with the alliances continue to shoot up, which we're really excited about. Um, the V10 launch was fantastic for us for most of our major strategic alliances, so we're really pleased about that. And a lot of our technical alliances as well, they really benefited from some of the new capability coming out there. So what we're seeing is not only are we seeing our go-to-market be enriched more and have a lot of success with the strategic alliances, the technology alliances are really starting to benefit from some of that new innovation that just came out. 
And finally, as well, some of the global systems integrators. We've seen a massive uptick in that interest in the last uh, in the last couple of quarters, and that's really helping to propel us into that enterprise space. So, yeah, it's been a really exciting uh, year, and uh, uh, certainly when you do these types of events virtually, your, your LinkedIn, your IM, and uh, text messages go through the roof, which is a nice way to to keep communication with the alliances. Yeah, David, I'd like to just drill in a little bit on, on some of the pieces that you're talking about there. Uh, you know, I, I really feel in the last year, uh, we saw a real maturation in what we talk about in hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know one of the you know, key strategic alliances actually from day one for Veeam, of course, was VMware. And you know, every time I saw an announcement of some of the VMware cloud pieces, uh, I usually felt like there was soon after a Veeam piece of it. Uh, could you bring us inside a little bit, especially some of the cloud pieces and maybe how Veeam differentiate uh, from, from some of the competition out there, you know, both VMware, you know, Amazon, Microsoft, and, and that whole ecosystem? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you touched on, uh, VMware and us have been very close throughout this process, and we're really excited about uh, some of the recent work that's been going on with them as well. Um, we also have tremendous steps forward with Amazon. That continues to be a strong area. Uh, and the Microsoft Azure Cloud and the way that we continue to enhance the way we work with their solution um, is really providing great strides forward, especially for the enterprise customers. Uh, we also were excited about the recent announcement related to Google Cloud as well. So that's another big area for us. Um, and so that was another thing that continues to differentiate us. And what I would say overall though, is it's about having that philosophy as customers continue to have their philosophical view related to on-premise cloud and off-premise cloud. What we're showing is whether it's through the hardware partners, whether it's through the application partners or through the cloud partners, we're enabling you to decide your workflows. And I think that's the bit that's a little bit different than, than some of the others that are out there. Taking that heritage that we've got in the virtual world and that mentality that certain IT departments have, it enables us to really synergize with those different partners as they go through their evolution. And as certain customers move more towards the public cloud, and they maybe look towards some workflows back to the private, that synergy between all of those areas is hugely important. And even for the hardware partners that we have, who have cloud plays, we're augmenting some of their value solutions as well. So it's a really sort of um, heterogeneous world that we're really pleased on the way that the market is accepting it. Yeah, and, and Daniel, that this, this move and uh, maturation of what's happened in the cloud has had a, a significant impact on the channel. I'd uh, love to hear you know, anything specifically you know, with your, uh, your viewpoint on the channel as to you know, how your partners are now adjusting to that, you know, VMware, Microsoft, uh, some of the other pieces as to how they're now ready uh, to help customers uh, to, you know, through these transitions. Yeah, and, and let, me, let me make one, one remark, which is very important. First of all, Veeam is not uh, a cloud provider and will not be a cloud provider. In other words, the idea is that we will never compete with our partners, never. Uh, so we provide technology, which is used by our partners and a number of them, are using that technology to provide services. A number of them are using this technology to resell uh, or to, uh, you know, to uh, implement some additional services uh, for their end customers. So this is a key, key element. We're not there to do anything in competition. We are here to complement and to use and to leverage as much as possible all our partners as much as we can. Uh, they know very good the market. They know very good how things are moving. They know very good what they can do. They know very good what they cannot do. Uh, and what their customers want or, or, or don't want. Um, so the big, big move that we see in, in the market is how everyone is moving more and more to, again, as I said initially, uh, to the cloud. Um, I mean, providing cloud services, whether it's multi-cloud or hybrid cloud, as you mentioned it, as you listed them, we have all different types of scenarios. And this is a very interesting thing, is us helping them, edu educating them on how to use our technology to be able to very quickly provide services and capabilities to their end customer. So we have a big, big investments in this enablement in what we call sales acceleration at, at Beam Software because it's all about businesses uh, and helping our partners to get there and to move them uh, as fast as possible. Again, there is a big, a big need, a big request from the end customers and a lot of the partners understand that and have to move very quickly to this new world of services and we are there to help and support because we strategically know that this is a way, not only for Veeam, but for the entire market. Yeah, Daniel, you know, an important point. I, I, I think anybody that thinks that, you know, Veeam is a competitor 
uh, you know, to the channel or things, you know, but probably doesn't understand the core value proposition of Veeam. What I'm curious from your standpoint is, you know, what was the impact of, you know, Veeam being acquired now by Insight? You know, obviously some management changes there. Uh, I'm, I'm curious what feedback you've gotten and how that impacts, uh, you know, the channel first. Yeah, I mean, let, let's be very open. As you know, it's one of, of I hope one of our qualities at Veeam is the transparency and, and the way we communicate again with the world, with our partners, especially with our partners. Uh, so initially, the feedback that I had and, uh, with a number of partners and big partners were a little bit of uh, you know, worries. Uh, that you know, what, you know, what is going to happen? What is next? Are we going to uh, to to lose the uh, the Veeam culture? Are we going to uh, are, are we going to go through a number of changes in, eventually in the strategy of Veeam? And actually, I have to say, and I'm extremely comfortable uh, in my let's say regular communications and connections with with uh, inside partners who have uh, acquired Veeam software, because they think that the strategy that we had and the strategy that we have now is the strategy they want just to keep on doing because it is a successful strategy. And by the way, when we look at the data uh, that we, we got from the market from, uh, uh, from, 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 some, from IDC that, that was out lately, we see that Veeam is the number one in growth uh, all around the world uh, compared to all the other vendors doing the same kind of technology. Uh, so that means that it is a successful strategy. Going with the partners and through the partners is a very successful strategy. And there is no reason that that, that should be changed. And Insight Partners understands that extremely good. And I feel very comfortable with, with, with our future. There will be more to us, but that we'll see in the coming quarters. Well, I, I, I think uh, you know we, we, we do need to have, make sure that Veeam has a little bit more focus on getting some green in your home environments there. Because um, normally if I'm doing an interview with green, I'm expecting, with Veeam, I'm expecting a little bit more of the, of the bright green there. David, you know, obviously, you know, the strategic alliances, uh, you know, some of those executive relationships are very important. Mm -hmm. Can you bring us in a little bit as to, you know, Daniel was saying there's a little bit of trepidation at the bit and they've worked through it. Uh, from the Alliance standpoint, uh, you know, what, what, what is this transaction? Uh, what, what's, what's transpired? Yes, Stu, it's, it's one of those things, it's a really unexciting answer because the answer, simple answer is calmness. Um, I, after 24 hours, once we announced it, my call sheet was pretty, pretty empty for the simple reason being that uh, we'd spoken to everybody very quickly and their resonant feedback was, that's great news. We know Insight, we trust Insight. We're glad that it's a, a growth play. Uh, also, it clears up the future. And, and obviously, when you have strategic alliances, there's always at the back of their mind wondering, well, is one of our competitors going to come in and acquire you guys? Um, your overall feedback was, this is fantastic. This is exactly what we wanted to see. Um, you provide clarity to our partnership. You can continue to invest and grow, which you've demonstrated for years, and you can move that forward for the next few years. Um, but also, more importantly, this enables us to feel even better doubling down on Veeam. And so, Frankly, while we haven't had any issues, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers out there have been through events of seeing sometimes that can be crazy. But to Daniel's point, the strategy hasn't changed. We're executing, we've got the support, and the strategic alliances, both at the executive level and also at the day-to-day -day level, are leaning in more and more and are pleased that we're executing on our strategy, focusing in the US with a big push, uh, bringing the investment moving forward, stabilizing the leadership team. It's just been, overall, it's been fantastic. So yeah, it's, it's a really um, unexciting new soundbite answer, but that uh, calmness and clarity has been a real takeaway. Excellent. Well, uh, one of, one of the, the, the key messages uh, in the keynote, of course, was talking about uh, digital transformation. We would love to hear uh, from, from both of you, uh, you know, what you're seeing and hearing, how, how Veeam's message is uh, you know engaging with both partners and ultimately the the end user itself. Uh, Daniel, maybe we'll start with you on that. Yeah, it all. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking. I, it, as usual, it always comes from the end customers and their needs, and and we all know that the needs for data uh, is is getting exponential. Uh, so that is why uh, we can't do things manually anymore. So it has to be uh, digitalized everywhere. And the very interesting thing is that. Digitalization is not only something that takes place with the end customers, but we see more and more because it's an absolute need uh, when partners are providing uh, services or providing uh, online services, cloud services, or providing even, even products, they have to di digitalize also themselves and they are doing it at very, very high speed. But I, I know I'm mentioning that because I'm extremely pleased with, uh, with, with, with the ecosystems of partners that we have 
because they understand very good how the market is, is, is evolving. And it's not only about the customers, but it's also about themselves that, that they are evolving extremely fast. And digitalization of all their processors, or the way they work with their end customers, is certainly one of the key, key elements, uh, which is going to be extremely good for the future. That's why, because of all these moves in a very positive and dy dynamic way, there is no reason why as Vim, we should change our strategies and the remaining 100% channel, uh, indirect uh, alliances, whatever it is, uh, having a large ecosystem, continue driving the ecosystem, building the ecosystems, organizing the ecosystem is absolutely key for the success of every, everyone, including Vimo, obviously. Great, and David, please from the alliances side. Yeah, Stu, I'm sure you'll know this better than anybody and uh, we're in a fortunate situation and we probably both get to sit through uh, all of the strategies that uh, a lot of the titans of industry are uh, are focused on right now and, and and having an ecosystem we do on the alliance side that rich tapestry from the very large to the very small is focused on that digital transformation uh, and i think the, the good news from my point of view and i'm going to touch on one of the points daniel mentioned before was we don't compete with them and so the advantage we've got is we're, we're plugging a piece of that strategy that they're looking for the criticality of data through this transformation is huge as everybody knows um, and what we're finding right now is that the approach that we take, the approach to focus on doing what we do extremely well is synergizing with the evolution that the customer is seeing as they go through that transformation. And transformation sometimes is scary. Transformation sometimes brings nervousness and they want to do it with a lot of their thought leaders they're working with, the VMwares, the Microsofts, the HPs, the NetApps, et cetera. And so from that point of view, the fact that we can provide them with that peace of mind for the complete solution has been fantastic. So, you know, when you look at uh, 75 plus partners, there's always going to be ones where you need to uh, thread the needle, shall we say, on exactly where your intellectual property provides that value to them. But the good news is we don't have to spend a lot of time on that because we're clear, we're concise. Uh, and a lot of times they've been involved in a lot of our strategy sessions. So they're on board with us. And I think to Daniel's area as well with the channel, the channel sees that as well. And that's why whether it's through the Alliance's channel or, or with us directly to the resellers, uh, we're finding that uh, that harmony is bringing a lot of peace of mind so you can focus on the pains of the customer and not worry about your technology partners fighting with themselves. And that's really where we pride uh, the overall ethic of the company. All right, well, the, the final item I have for, for both of you is, you know, normally, you know, we have a, a certain understanding of where we are and what the roadmap look like. Of course, we're dealing with a global pandemic right now. So as we look forward to the outlook, uh, I'd love to be able to hear a little bit about, you know, what you're hearing from your partners, how that is coloring, you know, decisions that are made really for the rest of uh, 2020, kind of the next 12 months or so. Um, and, you know, any other data points that you have uh, from your, your broad perspectives as to how people think the recovery is going to be. And obviously we understand there's a lot of uncertainty. So Daniel, you, you've got a, a great global viewpoint. We understand, uh, you know, what, what is happening impacts differently locally quite a bit, but um, what are you seeing going forward and, you know, the impact of the pandemic? Yeah, so I, I couldn't say the contrary. It is absolutely correct. And we see it in our numbers that the countries which are the most impacted by the COVID have a little bit more difficulties than the others uh, to, move, to move forward from a business standpoint, uh, which everybody understands, but we really see it in the numbers. Now, the thing, and this is what I like very much about, about our ecosystem and about Lean Software is we had a plan uh, that we set, up, we set in 2019 before we knew anything about COVID, a plan for 2020. And you know what? Uh, we are now in, you know, in, in, in our quarter, the second quarter of the month of, of the year, Q, Q2, and we are going to make our numbers. We are going to make our plan. And why are we going to make it? That's only because you know, it is Veeam, because we have a fantastic product, but it is very, very much because of, of all our partners who, despite all the issues that they are, they are encountering because of COVID, uh, are just you know, getting there fighting, helping themselves, helping us, and all together as, as a big business machine, as a big business system, we are just making success. And this will certainly show extremely good uh, at the end of the year when we look at the market share that BIM is going to gain again uh, with all our partners. It will be the, 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 
the results of the success. So good results, very good results, you know, and, and Veeam is just continuing to move uh, with, with this, uh, with this uh, network of partners. And, and David, obviously we've seen, you know, you know, many of the big partners, you know, being, uh, you know, very circumspect in, in their response, you know, nobody wants to be seen as, uh, you know, doing something that is untoward towards customers, taking care of these customers. So, you know, how, how's this impacting, you know, what, what you're doing with your partners and gives a little bit of the outlook going forward. Yeah, I mean, my, my, the word I'd use for this is energy. Um, some of these headlines that you see, of course, they're, they're going to get picked up um, with, uh, with the impact related to it. But on a day-to-day -day basis, through the discussions with the executives at the field level, we're seeing the energy. We're seeing people want to make sure that um, you capitalize on what is a tricky situation and certainly a very impactful situation. Um, but we're, we're not seeing people um, be resigned to it. We're seeing people really want to um, make sure that they are oscillating to the needs of their customers today, whether it's more endpoint, whether it's more towards the user experience, but also taking this time to keep building the foundation for a lot of that infrastructure related to um, data protection, data availability um, that we've enjoyed for, for a long period of time. So, you know, you, you have a degree of disruption, but the core objective that I'm seeing from all the major guys that are out there is let's make sure we drive hard. Let's not take the pedal off the metal. Let's not use this as an excuse. Let's keep moving forward. Uh, I mean, I, I would say our engagement with them has increased since all of this happened. Um, and so I don't think we ever expected to be running at the tempo we're running. Beam does it as standard, but we don't normally have that same tempo from, from some, of the, uh, some of the alliances. We're really pushing hard with them. So we're excited that when we continue to evolve through this current situation, everyone's going to be poised with a lot of aggression, a lot of desire to keep capitalizing on the work we've done together, to keep solving the customer demands that are going to come over the next 18 to 24 months um, and really make sure that uh, this is really a bit that is impactful, just to be clear, but, but not one that we're going to let define our future and we're going to do that together. So I think from us, um, we're excited about not only, as Daniel said, being success, but what we're starting to see is some really good attitudes uh, from all of our alliance partners, which we love to see. All right. Well, Daniel and David, thank you so much for the update. Uh, great to be able to chat with both. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks. All right, lots more coverage from Vimon 2020 online. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.